When a graduate steps onto the stage at a university or any other institution of higher learning, they go up as somebody who's achieved amazing things, but they never, in my view at least, go up there alone. There's always somebody else, many other people in many cases, family members, inspirational teachers, lecturers who looked out for them and helped them get on their way. Tonight on Kai FM 95.9, we celebrate people who have graduated in 2017. We look at their personal stories and we look at some of the challenges that they had to overcome as well. We're doing things a little bit differently tonight, Mkaya. We are once again not in our studio. We're in our building, though, in a room full of remarkable people. They are either family members or friends of graduates or they are graduates themselves. So we expect it to be celebratory tonight as it should, but it's also an opportunity to talk about some of the things that people needed to do to get as far as they did. We're going to talk to different people, starting off with the two guests who are up with me on the stage right now. First of all, we say a very good morning to Raisiche Sefala, who's just graduated from WITS with a BSc in Compu Computer Science and Information Systems. Raisiche, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. And let's give Raisiche a round of applause as loudly as we can. Also up is another graduate from the University of the Vatvatusrand, Mpo Mokhopodi, is a BA a graduate in Sociology and Marketing. Mpo, lovely to have you with us and well done to you too. Yeah, thank you. Raisicha, I understand that some of your challenge was to persuade your family that the degree you were doing was a degree worth doing. Tell us a little bit about that because I would think that could be quite tough. Yes, it definitely was. When I was doing my high school, I got nice marks, like I got great marks, and my father actually thought I'd make a good doctor. So I didn't want to be a doctor, mm. so I didn't want to do medicine. So he persuaded me to do life sciences, physical sciences, and geography, and not things like IT, because I wanted to do computer science. So I just carried on doing them. And when it was actually the time to just decide what I should be doing in varsity, um, he said, he gave me an ultimatum that if I don't listen to him, mm -hmm. um, he uh, might just um, stop funding me. So I was scared and I didn't know what to do. But then I said, how about I work hard, like so hard, so that these scholarships and bursaries just look at me and then think I'm, I'm deserving of getting it. So so I did yes. just that. I got seven distinctions and I got a scholarship to study computer science at WITS. And who was there when you graduated? Surprisingly, everyone in my family was there. My father was actually quite proud that I stuck it out and I, I did as I did because I was quite happy when I graduated to just see him there and just say, um, <laughs> so you both, you're all back on the same page again? Yes, now um, everything is fine. It does, Paul, though, raise an interesting story because invariably the investment in someone's education does come from the family and sometimes it's financial, but often I think it's emotional. People invest uh, their hopes in you and what you're going to do. Who was behind you when you made your own academic journey? I'm 37 years old and I am married uh, mm -hmm. with a six-year-old daughter. So my inspiration and the drive um, through my journey is definitely my husband and my daughter. And mm -hmm. you presumably had to spend time with your daughter stuff at home as well while keeping up with studies how did that work out uh, absolutely um i had partnered with uh, my husband and my sister so when i um started my degree in, in 2012 um, my husband had just completed his um, coursework for his masters and my younger sister 11 years younger than me was a had just also registered for a um an nlb degree lb degree lb law degree at right. as well so um after school, after, after work, um, I would drive from Randburg, from Randburg, from work, drive to uh, Bryanston to fetch my daughter from school, and then drive to Bramfontein, meet up with my sister. She would take the car and my daughter, and they'd go home. And then I'd have my classes, and then after, after lectures, my husband and, would pick me up, and then we'd go home. So it was, it, it, you know, it, it was collaboration from um, yeah. family members and uh, a whole lot of other people. And, and it needed everybody to be heading in the same direction. Did, uh, did you come from a family of graduates or were you and your sister the, the first couple? We graduated in the same week. My sister and I graduated in the same week, yes. And, and parents and, and <coughs> uncles and aunts? No, none. How did they see the journey that you were on? I mean, because 
some people would say, well, a BA, I know, I, I know this because I did a BA. Uh, people would say to me, yes, but who's going to give you a job? It sounds like you did it the other way around. You already had a job. And then you went and got the degree. Yes. But, but did you have strong support from the older generation of, of, of people in your family? Before I started my degree, I already had a, um, a PR, uh, PR and business analysis um, qualification. Yes. So, um, and I was already enrolled with um, UNISA, uh, with another institution. But um, halfway through the studies, I realized that um, the experience and the process were not engaging enough. Hence, um, I opted for VIRTS where I was going to be engaged, where, where I was going to um, engage with students, with lectures. Hence, um, you know, I... Hence, I, um, yeah, started, yeah, so I, I had to forego two, two and a half years of a degree, a three year right. degree, to start all over again because VETS couldn't credit me on the modules that had already passed. So, um, yeah, I had to start all over again. But um, yes, um, the, the, we do have uh, some graduates, but they are distant family members. Right. But um, for some reason, they understand your process and they understand that on a Sunday you need to leave early because you've got an assignment. You can't come to family gatherings, you can't come to weddings and funerals and sorts of things because the assignment's due. So, and I think they, they did understand and they did support me throughout the, the, the degree process. Right, Sicha, are you going to carry on studying or is, are you going to go out in, into the world of work and take a break from having assignments over your head every waking morning? Well, my father has a PhD and he always wanted me to become a doctor. Okay. So I enjoy this. I enjoy yes. computer science. I enjoy data science. And I'm just going to carry on with the master's uh, in, yeah, and PhD. You, you went into a field that's, that is, I think, factually, the, the numbers say male dominated. How difficult was that? It was quite interesting, really, um, getting into a class with 90% of the students being male um, it was interesting and but I, I must say at VITS they just make you uh, like this you don't actually feel like you are like a white like a one in uh, ten people kind of thing they it's just normal yes yes they just make it feel like, like the environment there and the like just how people treat each other girls and guys, it's just normal, actually. My name is Dutugom Kulise. I am graduated in National Diplomas Civil Engineering. Congratulations. <laughs> and, and where did you do that? I did my uh, civil engineering at DFC UJ. Okay. Yes. Um, it's been a tough journey because I went through... Um, schizophrenia mm -hmm. which uh, was with depression yes um it's usually they say that you are depressed but it's not just the depression you are also paranoid so i i was on the medicine for that um in my first year i completed successfully i passed well at uj and then i battled in my second year because now the doctor told me, I'm right off. You can leave the medication now. No, he didn't say you can leave the medication, but he said it's, it's okay. I don't need to keep seeing you. So I, in my mind, I thought, just leave the medication because I used to hate it. But then leaving the medication, it came to a lot of things. Because mm -hmm. when I left the medication, I wasn't calm enough to read and study. I was very hyperactive in class. I used to ask a lot of questions. And I'd have the lecturer saying, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was uh, very troublesome. But and then I managed to overcome that. And, and was it a supportive environment? The health services at the university, did they have the capacity and, and the sensitivity to deal with the, the issues that you brought to them? In a way, they did, but only telephonically. Yes. When I tried to do a face-to-face -face meeting, I was successful right at the end of my saga, and not when it really mattered the most, because it's, it's very hard to get to that place. You know, when you are sick, sometimes you don't even know where to get help. Yes. And so PsyCAD went through, and then they got me a psychologist. And she talked to me nicely, 
And after that conversation, I was, I was not the same again. I could feel like I could conquer the world now. And that's how it, it went. I mean, many congratulations to you. Tell us about your, your graduation and who was there and how you felt. Oh, um, that's a nice one because mine hasn't happened happening tomorrow. Oh, you graduated tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, can we all come or are all the tickets taken? All oh, the tickets are taken. Sorry, guys. Who's, who's, who's going to be there? I mean, it's going to be a special day. By the way, where are you from before you tell us that? Oh, I'm from Rosettenville. Okay. Um, Joburg, yes, Great. yes. The one who's going to be there is my father, my mother, and my cousin. I asked her to accompany me because she's a UJ student. Okay. And nicely, she's also doing third year. <laughs> and, uh, just to stay with you, because it's a fascinating story. And uh, is, is your family a family of graduates or uh, previous generations? Did they get tertiary opportunities and, and, and manage to take them? That's a nice one. It's, a, it's not as a simple story. Yes. My mother yes. was a graduate, yes. the first graduate of the whole family. And then my father, he graduated later when he was working. So my mom, she used to tell me that I was pregnant with you when I was, when I was doing my second year. Yeah. And then she said, I was pregnant with you, I was doing my third year, my sister. So like it's that story of... Uh, Graduated straight from high school and graduated while working. And they're both UJ graduates. I, I want to come back to, to you, Paul, and ask you this in, in the light of the story we've just heard. How important is it to feel that your family is behind you? Because we've had this show before we did it last year, and there were some people who were under real pressure. They had family members who'd worked so they could study. And there was a little bit of pressure. Get your studies done. What do you mean you want to do drama? Can you please go and do something that will start providing resources for the generation to come behind you? How important is it to just have a sense that everyone's got your back and they're willi willing to wait for you to, to run your race? I think for the reason that um, my husband has a master's degree. Yes. And um, he's just, he was just encouraging that you need to have some sort of a qualification. I mean, I was already in a job and uh, I'd like to believe that I, I was, very, you know, I'd done very well and, um, and yeah, hit made strides and was very good at my job. But I just needed that, that qualification, that, that degree. I mean, like I said, I had um, two previous qualifications, but they were not degrees. But having um, a degree, no matter what it is, um, no matter what it is, it, it didn't matter, basically, what it, what it was. Um, I needed to have some sort of qualification. So do, do you feel different now that you have that behind your name? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's I, wish, I wish this was TV because <laughs> you would be able to see Mpo's smile and she suddenly grew, I think, about four centimeters in her chair. It, that, that's how you feel. It's, I'm it's, trying it's to describe feeling. it. It's a beautiful feeling. Beautiful and very emotional feeling. Well, congratulations. Yes. My two guests are brothers, twins, Bandile and Banele. Daniso, they both graduated with B Social Work degrees from the University of Johannesburg. Many congratulations to both of you. I, I, I want to start with you, Bandile. Your, your journey began in Katlahong in Mandela Park. What made you both want to do social work? Um, okay, I would like to start off by saying it is a great pleasure to be part of this show today and um, I hope that this will inspire many people to actually um, initiate change, positive change in their lives. Um, what made us to actually choose to do social work was the very same fact that we were very empathetic, um, we were very understanding of the um, uh, human problems societal problems and um, in fact we've been oriented uh, from a very underprivileged background. Share the, the microphone with, with your brother if you will just for a moment and, and Banela tell us about because you continue to live out in Katlahong, long way from UJ. Well, what was involved logistically? It, it doesn't sound like you moved into res, you were going back and forth, lots and lots of time commuting. Tell us about that. All right. Um, when we began our journey um, in the University of Johannesburg, um, it was not an easy journey. Um, it was a biggest hurdle that we had, we had to overcome. Um, obviously, knowing that we are from um, a poor break background, obviously we grew up in a very poor township, and um, seeing ourselves doing a social work uh, in the first year, 
was not an easy journey simply because um, we did not have enough funds um, to stay, for example, in a nearby accommodation. Yes. yes. So we uh, often used transport, especially train, because we didn't have uh, even enough money to write taxes, you understand? So that was the biggest challenge we've so ever had. So what time did the alarm clock go off, or did it go off in your head? Because you knew you had to be up. <laughs> Obviously, you have to wake up very early in the morning. And looking at our background, um, we are from an extended family. Mm -hmm. So there was too many of us in the same household. So um, we had to squeeze our time in and prepare ourselves before we can actually go to the Combius. So, so Bandile, let's, let's go to the other end of the day. Um, you get home, you've got lots of work to do. You're, you're in a household, presumably with responsibilities, but other people who aren't studying. How tricky was that? Presumably you'd done that through high school and matric, but I think university is particularly demanding. The, the study space, tell us about that. So very well. Um, studies are very demanding because um, looking at our situation, it would take uh, three trains to go to the institution. Yeah. And uh, by the time we get to the institution, it's either we're late for a class mm. or we're late for a tutorial. Sometimes it would be a sick, uh, for exams or tests. You understand that? So in that case, we'd have to actually write sick tests. And uh, coming back as well was, was also tiring because we had a long way to go back home. And sometimes we'd get home tired and not being able to do enough, um, put enough energy for our academic work. Reintroduce yourself and tell us about your degree. Sorry to make. Yes, sir. Questions. My name is Bright Kumalo. Great. I have graduated with a BA in psychology from Fantastic. the. Fantastic. Thanks. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Why, why psychology and how did you get there? Okay, so I want to give you a summary of my background. <laughs> I have a total of 13 siblings. I come from a small, a big, actually, township called Umlazi in Durban. Mm -hmm. So I'm the fifth of these children, and I was motivated by just trying to be the role model for my younger siblings because everyone had, hadn't finished school and et cetera. So I just decided one day that I was going to take my small bag of clothes and come to Johannesburg and see what I will do with my life. So a large family, were there, were there siblings who graduated before you or are you the first in your family? Zilch. Okay. <laughs> that's, what, um, that's what caused this drive within me, actually, yeah. And, and older siblings, were there some who went into the world of work and contributed financially or inspirationally to your studies? Not per se, hey, John. Um, my dad was the one who was working, but he was struggling as well. So I just looked around and I saw that no one is doing anything academically, so well, how about I just try to make something of myself? Tell us about your career choice. I mean, yeah. when you said, I'm going to Johannesburg to do psychology, was there a sense in your family that this was a good choice, or, or was there any resistance that you faced? I did not face any resistance because everyone was just doing their thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, personally I just came to Joburg to, I pushed dancing because I'm also a dancer mm -hmm. and during that time I was also just f applying for scholarships and etc. And that's how I ended up at Vits, yeah. So a large family, who got the graduation tickets? <laughs> Uh, that's a different topic because I had a topic, uh, I had a discussion with Jean about support and etc. Mm -hmm. So you imagine your graduation day this, as this happy day with everyone happy for you and, right. and etc. But it wasn't as such, eh? Because you find that it ends up being a bit of a power struggle yes. in the sense that the older siblings feel like you feel you better and etc. But that's a different topic, so. Okay. <laughs> and, and you mentioned Jean, but we don't know who Jean is. And Jean <laughs> is, has a hand up and wants a microphone. Uh, will you pass that along to Jean? Great. And Thank you. Jean, join the conversation uh, at any point that you like. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Jean Verster. Um, I was the Msa or is still the Masari Moholo in my class. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I graduated with a B accounting degree um, last year at UJ. Well done. I just want to say with the stories that I've heard, there are amazing students all around mm -hmm. with amazing stories about um, things that they needed to overcome. And being studying at an older age, what I had to overcome was my brain. Yes. <laughs> because, and it sounds funny, because studying at an older age, you have to put in twice, three times the effort to remember half of the stuff. Well, or why, why do you think that is? Because 
Uh, I mean, I'm 57, and I haven't been in well, university. Well, uh, that's not old. We yes, <laughs> but, 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 but just, to, just, to, just to finish my story, I, I haven't been in a university since 1986. I like to think my brain is a little bit clearer. Wouldn't I find studying? Easy? Well, we, we've we've got wisdom, yes. but this um, so you get marks for wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a difference between wisdom and, and, and knowledge sure. and you have to uh, in a large sense also have to remember new knowledge and it's the remembering of new knowledge yes. that, <laughs> that's a challenge well congratulations and thanks for for sharing with us i want to come back to to our guests on the panel bandile um you, you were raised by your mom, but also your, your, your grandmother, um, Tombi Zanele, played a big part in your life. Tell us about the, 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 I don't know if inspiration is the right word, but the support you got from both them. My understanding is your mom had to travel because of the nature of her job. But between them, presumably, they gave you some backing to, to do well first at school and then at university. What, what, what credit would you give them for the success you, you and your brother have achieved? Um, I would like to say thank you, thank you very much for the support that they gave us. Um, it means a lot because uh, without them, we wouldn't have gone so far. And um, now today we are graduates, in fact, the first graduates in our family. So it really means a lot for us. And I'm saying thanks again to our family. They played a very vital role to make us where we are today. And, and how did they feel about your choice of degree? Was there any questions are saying social work you know who's going to give you a job doing that in fact i remember particularly especially about my grandmother she had recommended that we do social work because okay. it's a very good course it will help us to understand um, human problems and to start helping ourselves and other people to actually empower other people and ourselves so it really meant a lot for us to do social work and uh, for them as well especially my grandmother so I, I want to come back uh, to family matters in a moment and, and, and get Banele's take on it. But I have to ask you, you, you first and then your brother can answer as well. Who gets the better marks and are you, <laughs> and, and, and how competitive are you? Well, I will say there's no one who gets the better mark than yeah, the other the because... Okay, can I explain this? <laughs> can, I, can I really explain this? No, of course you can. Um, looking from our grade 12 marks yeah. from high school, like we usually used to attain the same marks. So when I say the same marks, the exact mark. Mm -hmm. If I got a 63, you'd get a 63 himself. Okay. And then if maybe you are different, we'll be like two points different or one so point difference. Goes, yeah. And um, if you check the APS, the APS mine would be a point difference to his. If I got maybe mm -hmm. 34, he's got 33. You understand? Okay. So <laughs> that's. Uh, <laughs> Or the other way around. <laughs> yes, and... Um, are, you, are you competitive? I would say um, in perspectives alone, but um, when it comes to doing um, academic work, we have to actually both of us focus into that work <laughs> and m create a very beautiful teamwork, you know, okay. that will make us move forward. Yeah. But, but Banele, um, it, it would have been a, a sadness for you that, you that your grandmother wasn't there mm -hmm. to, to see the fruits of her efforts. But obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what excellent young men the two of you have become. Mm -hmm. D did you remember her in some way if in, in, on that day? Was there some way in which she was there for you, even if, if she had passed on? Yes, I remember uh, my grandmother played a significant role um, in supporting us um, towards our studies. Um, I remember um, she was alive when we were doing our first year, but um, on the 24th of October, I think, um, the 23rd, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, on the 23rd, um, it was the day uh, she passed away. Um, um, and we were at campus on the very same day. It was a Friday, and when we came back, um, it was just a normal day, like any other day. And um, we even ate for supper. Um, we was seated and we were talking, conversating with her. Um, but then after all, uh, my, nef my nephew actually got sick um, and that thing got to shock my grandmother. So she couldn't cope at all. So um, she had an anxiety breakdown, uh, I might say a nervous breakdown, yeah. and uh, it actually got to her. And it got to a point whereby she couldn't breathe um, quite well. Um, but apart from that, um, I remember her for the things that she has done for us. 
Good evening, John. I'm Bernie Green. Um, I'd like to reiterate what Jean said regarding age. It was a great opportunity for me or for Vitz Plus allowing me the privilege of studying as a mature person. And I graduated in March in BA in politics and international relations. Fantastic. Everyone said why, but for me, it just enlightened me. It, um, I understand my country better and understand international issues better. I have, I've gained a lot of confidence as a person because of that. And I also feel I'm a good example to my family with my son and my daughter-in-law behind me, as well as extended family and friends. I'm one of the first ones that matriculated at home. Um, and, and where's home? Home is in Durban. Okay. Bright and I were in the same class. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, yeah, so I'm not the only one. My brother's also achieved. So moving forward, I'd like to give back to the community and inspire younger people that it's possible. If I can do it at age 50, so can you. And, and what, what was the hardest thing about studying? I mean, we, we heard Jean's perspective, the, the le, having to reset your brain almost back to where it was in high school, I would imagine. Did you have a similar experience or were there other difficulties, challenges that, that people should know about? I think for me it was uh, easier because I work, I'm an employee of it, okay. so I have a lot of interaction with the lecturers and tutors, so they were always on hand to assist me if I had an issue, and the, the, the great part with us was we formed a lot of groups. Mm. The, the, one of the biggest challenges was family. Fortunately, my husband was there to take over and help where I had to attend classes at night. And the, the other challenges was weekends. You, you, you don't have a family life. Yeah. You lose friends along the way. And, but that was just part of getting to where I wanted to be. Let's welcome another guest. Ntobisi Ndaba has a master's in sociology, sociology at WITS, and he's with me up on the platform. Uh, Ntobisi, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Your journey started in escort in KZN, and I understand as part of your studies, you're looking at the academic experience yeah. um, and wanting to give back because clearly this is complicated stuff. Uh, there's financial pressure, there's family pressure, yeah. there's a whole lot of cultural stuff and political issues that are the legacy of our country. Mm. Uh, but share with us, first of all, your own journey to get to bits in that master's degree. Oh! <laughs> you have to summarize. It, it, it's, it's a long journey, but I will summarize. Um, mm. I came to Wits in 2011. I started in electrical engineering, and uh, I passed my first day in electrical engineering. However, I felt like I wasn't really passionate about it. Yes. So I decided to change and, and did social work as my undergrad degree in 2012. And I did well, I passed, I finished, and I did my master's in sociology uh, in 2016. And I just completed uh, recently in March. So it, it, it wasn't a very easy journey because when I came here, as obviously I'm, I'm, I'm the first one in my family to, mm -hmm. to, to, to graduate or to even be at university. And there was a lot of pressure from my school to do a course in you know, those degrees that are seen as prestigious. Yes. That is why I started with electrical engineering at first. And where are you in the family chain? Siblings, do you have? Yeah, I do have siblings. I do have siblings. Um, born, where are you? I'm, I'm the firstborn okay. uh, with my mom, but uh, as I'm gr I grew up in a, an extended family, so I lived with my mother's side of my family, so it was quite a big family, and from my mom, I'm the firstborn. And the younger siblings, any hot on your heels coming into university, and, and if they are, can, are there ways in which you can help them? Yeah, uh, there's one, my sister, not Tolo, she's in, in KZN at Univers Mangosut University of Technology, uh, she started this year. She, she finished matric um, in 2015, and she took a gap year last year, but she started this year. Good evening. Uh, my name is Louisa Nonlala, well known as Mamelo, to those who just knew me a few years ago. I graduated um, pub 
National Diploma Public Relations in 2015, and I am graduating with my BTEC and Management Services tomorrow. Tomorrow? And where yes. is that going to happen? At UJ. And who's coming? I have my sister with me here. Okay. And I'm hoping my dad will come because he actually didn't know I was studying, so it's a surprise. It's a surprise oh. for him. So, so how have oh, you got father. him here? What, what does he, where does he think he's going? I don't know. <laughs> but someone is getting him there. <laughs> someone is getting him there. Well, well, I wish we could hear this story. Maybe you can just post it on Facebook for us. But that's a wonderful story. So, so why do you want to do it as a surprise? Um, I want to do it as a surprise because I, I, I come from a very humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. I went to up? university. I, I grew up in the West End in Mildred's Drift. Okay. Um, I went to university because I had to leave home. Yes. I had to break that barrier. I, I, I was in, in a high school where we were taught English in Zulu and Zona somehow, but yeah, we managed. And uh, looking at my environment and looking at my background at home, I thought my, my father is, 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 is unemployed and my stepmother was the only breadwinner in the house, so I had to make a difference. So I went to university without knowing what I was doing. I applied for a course that was available and public relations yes. was, and I thought I will be able to change a course should I find myself during, and I feel like I don't like it, so I, I completed it. I fell in love with it. When, when, when you walk up onto the stage tomorrow, presumably you will have great shoes because my yes, wife graduated definitely. recently and she, when she was choosing her outfit, she was saying, nobody's going to see your dress, but you absolutely <laughs> have to nail the shoes. Which is so, why I'm still struggling to find shoes. Okay, well, I've been trying to do that today the whole aware, day. Otherwise I could ask her to come and help. But, but in, in all seriousness, <laughs> a, as you walk up, what, will you, what in your mind will be the biggest challenge? What is the toughest thing? Apart from the many hours of study, um, presumably travel, finance, all that, but what would come top of mind as the hardest part? The hardest part was the fact that I would usually have to look for something to eat. Yes. Because I, I, I didn't really have financial support, no emotional support or anything. The family I'm coming, I was, I'm the first graduate, and the family I'm coming from doesn't really understand the struggles of being in varsity and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was that, and I had a friend who I would struggle with. Am I, am I allowed to mention her name? Of course you can. Siposa Tumshawuli. She knows when, when, when I say, do you remember the hunger strikes? Yes. We actually laugh about it until UJ introduced the gift of the givers, where they give now meals to students, then it became a bit easier. Many congratulations, and I hope it's a fabulous day for your dad. I Thank you. I, I hope so. Yeah. Let me, let me bring you, you back in, and, and mm -hmm. because presumably the studying that you're doing is covering all sorts of things and trying to make a larger sense of individual journeys. But, but you tell us, what, what are you looking at and what have you found? Okay, um, I will start with what I was doing in my honours study. I looked at factors that facilitate success for black students from disadvantaged backgrounds. So what I, uh, I was basically looking at is the, is the reason why I did that study, it is because what I've been reading in, in literature is that they are disadvantaged, they don't have the skills, they are underprepared. Yes. It's stories that pathologize black students from disadvantaged backgrounds. I wanted to say or to make the point that there are students who actually graduate despite those things, and we never, ha we never hear those stories. So I had to look at that, and what I've been finding is that there's a lot of sacrifices that um, families do, even though they cannot support academically or financially, but there's a lot of sacrifices that parents do to, sub to make sure that their, their children, when they get to varsity, they eventually succeed, you know. There was a story in my, in my own study that um, they they used lobola money that was paid for the for the other sisters to yeah. pay for the stu for the studies of the other sister and I'm looking at that story and how inspiring it is. So and then in in my own in my master's study I looked at academic development programs, in terms of how do they contribute to the success of these students. I want to ask you this question, uh, and I won't give long background to it. Are you inspired by some of these stories, or are, or are you angry? Because it does worry me slightly that we think that we as a society can go on inspiration and maybe we should be starting to get a little bit angrier and say why is it that people have to do that why is the journey so difficult in a society like ours which has resources but what are your thoughts does inspiration outweigh frustration i would say it's a bit of both 
Yeah. For me, it's it's 50-50 because I'm inspired by the stories in terms of how they managed to do it, but also looking at the type of support that is still required and the type of transformation that still needs to happen at university. We're still far from where we, sh we should be. Um, hi, uh, my name is Puseleto Mabuse. I'm from Sabuswa in Pumalanga. I've just graduated at the University of Johannesburg with a national diploma in credit management. I graduated with distinction. Fantastic. Mm. From, from Siabuswa to UJ, what, what was the hardest thing? Who inspired you? Um, I was inspired. Actually, I come from a very academic family. My father is a graduate. My mother, who passed on, was a graduate. My sister just graduated this year. So I was very inspired when I joined this academic, going to higher education. And the challenges that I faced, I faced a lot of challenges. I met people, but I also fell pregnant in my first year. Mm -hmm. I, on my second year, I had to write sick tests. I remember my baby girl was only eight days old. I had to go and write my sick test. Goodness. And I had to live with her at university while studying. So I got a nanny, and then the nanny got a better offer, and then I had to take her to daycare. I'd, I'd have to go to school in the morning take her to the daycare, go to school, study, four o'clock, I have to go pick her up, go, and sometimes I would study with her, put her, and explain why I, I did accounting, I loved accounting, I'd tell her, why are we debiting this, why are we crediting this? And she'll fall asleep, and I'll put her there, and I'll continue studying. So, yeah, it became fun, and I, I really, right now, I feel that I needed to go through that, because now I'm stronger. I believe I can face anything, I believe I, if, I, if I, I went through this, then there's nothing that I cannot overcome now. Hi, my name is uh, Ryan Woodrudge. Welcome. Um, thank you. I graduated, uh, while well, I'm graduating tomorrow, I completed my BTEC in structural engineering. Fantastic. I have a vocal element, mm -hmm. and um, I've had it throughout my life. It uh, was a challenge for me, particularly dealing with society and how they saw me because my impairment is not something I can hide. Mm. You see it as soon as you meet, meet me or hear it. Uh, primary school was very hard. Children can be very mean. Um, as I went through primary to tertiary, or primary, secondary, and tertiary, as you move to more mature uh, people, it was easier to break out and become someone that I can s talk and engage with people and learn to communicate because for me, communication became a barrier because I isolated myself. Um, but I made it through and I managed to get a job at Group 5. Um, during my studies, my lecturers were very supportive, always took my questions, quiet in the class if they needed to. Yes. And it's been a journey, a tough one. I made it through and I'm quite proud. Congratulations. Quite, quite proud. You should be very proud. Pass the microphone on. We've got time for one more input. If you could keep it fairly short, but over to you, sir. Okay, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is McDonald Mukwele. Um, I'm graduating tomorrow as well. Uh, BTEC uh, Transport Engineering with Cum Laude. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Which university? Yeah, from the University of uh, Johannesburg, and this is my Brilliant. second qualification, okay. which uh, it all started in 2012 when I was working during the night as a radiographer, and during the day I would go to school. So it was uh, quite a difficult journey because um, I was working for a provincial hospital where it was very busy, so 24 hours I was working, 24 hours I was studying, so it has been a very difficult journey for me. And, and where did you grow up? Um, I'm, I'm actually from Limpopo, but I moved this side, so I'll call myself from Joburg now. <laughs> You're from Limpopo, currently in Joburg? Yes, yes. Okay, great. And, who, and who's coming to graduation? My family, my grandmother, so I know she, it means a lot for her, and then my sister as well, and uh, my father is also coming. So if it was possible, I would call the whole community from Blood River and No, it's well. not too late. Call them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for their fantastic inputs, wonderful stories. The feedback we're getting on social media is that people are really inspired by you. And since you took a vote to say this thing of no dancing, no ululating, 
is nonsense. Maybe you want to celebrate yourselves with as much noise as you can make. That's it for me here on KFM 95.9. Over to you, the graduates and families. Let's hear it.